I, 37M, have a biological child who I've never seen, 17F, wanting to make contact, which I don't want, but my family does. What should I do here? When I was 19, I was assaulted by an older colleague, 34F, after a works night out, and she got pregnant. It didn't really go anywhere legally, as it was my word against hers and she had the kid. Sadly, as there's no proof it wasn't consensual, I had to pay child maintenance until I was 18. Obviously, as it was a product of what happened to me, I wanted nothing to do with it. Told her to raise the baby herself. The woman passed away, not sorry about it. A couple years back, and I have not heard anything about the kids since, so I had no idea what was going on other than my maintenance stopping. Which was a relief because I finally felt like a milestone had been lifted from around my neck. Because of what happened, I never have been in relationships because of the issues it's caused me. I haven't got any kids or anything like that, so I feel like I can start living a bit. Brought down to earth a bit last month when my mom said the kid got in touch with her on social media, and asked about me slash my family, and told them she was living with her grandparents herself after her mom passed away. Until they both passed away themselves, so she doesn't have anyone now. Now my mom is one of these people with a massive soft spot for kids slash young people, so I feel sorry for her. I told her I didn't feel comfortable with her being in touch with us and I want nothing to do with her, so keep her away from me. She seemed upset, but I thought she accepted it. I will say throughout it all since then, my parents have been an absolute rock. They were some of the only people to support me and I couldn't have done it without them. So I was talking to my mom at the weekend and she admitted to me that she's not only kept in touch with the kid, but she had met them a week before. And they didn't tell me. Basically, they feel really bad for her because of the life she's had and they're starting to enjoy her being in their life. Not only that, she's been asking about me and what happened, and wants to meet me to talk and ask me questions. Obviously, I'm upset about it. I was really upset because she went against my wishes, and she betrayed my trust like that. She said it's hard for her and my dad because of the way I've been. Never had any kids or anything. They've always been sad that they'll never have a grandchild and this may be their only chance. She also told me she thinks I'm being out of order taking it out on an innocent child who didn't ask for this, and could at least meet her to talk. I said no and have not spoken since, which is hard because I normally ring my folks twice a day and my mom keeps trying to ring me. I don't know what to do, Reddit. Obviously, I don't want to be cruel, but that kid is a reminder of what happened to me, and I'm just angry she's coming back into my life now when I thought it could be over. And how can my parents do this to me when they know how I feel? As it stands, I have no desire to meet her. I don't see the good that could come from it, but I don't want to lose my parents either. What should I do? Edit. So I spoke to my mom today. She still insisted on having a relationship with her. I said she can, but I tell her I do not want to meet her at all. Would you believe my folks are actually intending on her coming over and having Christmas dinner with us? I basically said if they do that, I'm not going. Important edit. I get people disagreeing with my parents' actions, but do not be disrespectful of them or call them names, please. Despite this, they're wonderful people and were the only people who have ever had my back throughout. Thank you. TLDR. My child born of an assault wants to make contact, but I don't and my parents have been in contact despite my wishes and are forging a relationship with her. She wants to talk to me and I don't want it, which is causing issues between my folks and I. What should I do? I understand that OP probably doesn't want to meet this child because it's a bad reminder of the memories, but at the same time, I don't think there can be too much harm in simply meeting the child. I do understand that OP does absolutely have every single right to deny this meeting, but I don't really see much harm coming out of it either. However, I do understand OP's child wanting to meet them. The situation that happened to OP was absolutely terrible, but at the same time, this child shouldn't be punished for what happened. I completely understand her wanting to meet her biological parent, and honestly, in this case, both of them are victims. But it's impossible to really say which path is the right path. Update. Reddit. You were advising me on the situation. I, 37M, am in with my biological child. 17F. So today I made a decision and want to see if it sounds as crazy as it is in my own head. So basically I've decided to go to my parents' house at Christmas, when she's going to be there, and meet her. I honestly just decided it today. I've been talking to my mom about it all weekend in the past few days, and the more we talk openly, it has made everything seem a bit more clear. I have worked out that despite the history attached and no matter our biology, she's just a little girl. So today, I was talking to my mom on my lunch break, and we were discussing Christmas and how we do it logistically at this point. I was only going on Boxing Day. When my mom mentioned Christmas dinner and plating me one up to warm up and eat at home, I just realized what's the point of avoiding everyone, and sitting at home getting pissed and playing PC with my only fish for company. So I went something like, yeah, screw it. Get enough for me and I'm coming Christmas Day too. She thought I was joking, 
When she realized I wasn't, I could tell in the tone of her voice she was thrilled. She asked me if I realized the kid's still going and I said I do. She asked me how I feel. I said honestly I don't want to think all about that. I just want to go Christmas Day and spend it with my family. And if a young girl is there, I'll just be polite and respectful and treat her how I would any lonely young woman on Christmas Day. I asked her to let her know, and text her to see if she's also okay with that. She did, and in the short space of time on my call, she got back to my mum really happy, saying of course it is and can't believe it. So that's it, I'm going. My mum texted me earlier saying that she's so happy I'm coming and doesn't have to worry about me being on my own anymore. I sat there this afternoon feeling a bit relieved, and I'm also absolutely terrified, but not in a bad way. More of a facing something uncertain way. Am I nuts? A week ago I posted and was acting like I would rather cut contact with everyone. Now I don't know what I feel. I'm thinking of writing her another letter too. Nothing serious, just a bit about me to introduce myself and maybe ask her for one back. Would that be a nice thing to do? Too much? I mean, obviously I might panic and cancel last minute, knowing how flaky I can be, but I hope not. Thanks for the great suggestion. I've set up a new email address solely for the purpose of her and I to communicate, so it saves us both having to write letters and wait. My mom's got her email for me, so I'm in the process of drafting an email. I've spent hours in the past week communicating with strangers all over the world on Reddit. But do you think I know what to say in an email to a teenage girl living not too far away from me? I'm absolutely blank. TLDR. I'm going to my parents' house at Christmas, and the girl who's my biological daughter will be there, and will meet despite being against it previously. I'm not sure if I'm being brave or mad. I would certainly say that OP is being very brave here. It's never easy to face your own traumas, especially when that trauma comes in the form of a person, and I'm sure that meeting his daughter won't be an easy thing to do, but I hope it turns out for the better for both of them. Update. I have a daughter. So, what now? What does someone in my position do? So sorry folks, editing my first post, I accidentally deleted it. Those of you who check out post history are welcome to check my post history out. Trigger warning, assault though. I also posted this on another sub, but it got pulled for the same reason. But me and my daughter have been corresponding through email the last few days a lot. It feels like hundreds of emails and getting to know each other. Even though it's been weird, I've really enjoyed it. She's a lovely kid, and I genuinely like her. So this afternoon we were chatting, and I signed off my email with Love Dad without thinking. And she messaged me back, Dad, you mean it? And I was like, I suppose I do. I haven't heard from her since, but she's working today, but I keep thinking about it. In fact, she texted me a couple of minutes ago with a smiling emoji and a love heart. I responded the same. I was so scared to embrace her. To me, a couple of weeks ago, she was just my attacker's baby. Now I acknowledge she's mine. Like I'm her dad. She's my daughter. I wouldn't say love is the right word, but she's mine. If someone asked me if I had a kid, I'd say no. I don't know how I feel about it on an emotional level. I don't have this warm paternal feeling like I think people probably do it, but at the same time, I know she's mine. Even though we've never met, but at the same time, I feel I want to meet her before Christmas. I don't know if I can wait. Even if we have a video message, I'm going to video call her tomorrow. I'm really nervous. I don't think a lot of people have been in my situation ever, but is this natural? Am I doing it right? Should I do anything different? What does a dad actually do? I feel like crying yet smiling at the same time. Unfortunately, this story did leave us on a bit of a cliffhanger, but sometimes we can't always get an ending to these kinds of stories. Sometimes they just keep going on. In any case, I hope OP is doing much better now with his daughter. Husband, 30M, admits that I, 28F, am ugly. I am an unattractive woman, objectively. I've always been this way, and while I have accustomed myself to it, it nonetheless remains a daily fact that being an ugly woman sucks. I met my husband four years ago, and he is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. He has always and frequently told me I'm beautiful, and somehow sounded honest, without sounding like my mother, like someone without another option to answer. Last night, Saturday, he had a group of friends over to our home. They meet several times a month to hang out, catch up, and play games. He has known most of these guys since high school. I was upstairs in the kitchen preparing drinks and snacks when I was able to hear them in the basement and began to eavesdrop which I know was rude, but it wasn't really intentional. I realized they were talking about me. A couple of guys were teasing my husband about me, specifically about my looks. I could tell it was supposed to be funny. It was not. There was a point where one of them referred to me as a troll, and my husband blew up, started shouting, Listen, shut up. I know that, my name, is ugly, but shut up. She makes me happy. Does your bimbo of the week do that, Jim? Dave, how long has it been since we've hung out and you haven't complained about your wife? Not real names. He went on for a while, defending me, but all I could hear was, I know she's ugly. I know she's ugly. I know she's ugly. Again and again in my head. It just broke me and I don't know why. I've always known I'm unattractive, but he isn't supposed to. He tells me I'm beautiful so sincerely and consistently and started to believe he actually thought that. I started to cry and ran into a shower so no one could hear me. When I came out an hour later, everyone had gone home. Far earlier than normal. 
I went to bed then and haven't spoken to him all day today, but I think I've been able to avoid letting him know I'm upset or avoiding him. I know rationally what he said was true and sweet, and that I should be happy he loves me and not my body, but it doesn't seem to matter. I just want to be pretty. God, I feel so shallow. I've been crying all day. What do I say to him? A part of me wants to call him a liar and scream and yell and cry, while the other part just wants to run away and never have to talk to him again and acknowledge that even the greatest man I have ever met can't find me attractive. While what OP's husband said about her in her defense was sweet, he also shouldn't have called her ugly. That was definitely a line that he crossed and should not have. I completely understand where OP is coming from, and she has every right to be upset in this circumstance. Update. This one turned out really long. Sorry. First off, I'd just like to say thanks. Just wow. Over the last two days, I've had literally hundreds of messages and PMs. You guys rock. Seriously, look at that thread. It has got to be one of the best positivity and sweetness to meanness and jerks ratio on all of Reddit. Like, ever. You guys knocked it out of the park for me. I'm still figuring out why. So, yesterday after getting a barrage of support from you guys on my phone, every couple of minutes non-stop all day, I decided to try and confront my husband over what I'd heard. After we were both home from work, I told him I needed to talk. I told him I overheard him and his friends and he immediately started to apologize for them, saying they were jerks and awful, and that I should have told them that I'd heard. I had to stop him to let me get a word in and tell him it wasn't his friends so much as it was what he said. When I told him what he said, his whole tone changed. I could tell he wasn't expecting to be blamed. I had had the whole conversation planned out. I wanted to explain how it made me feel. How I thought he was really attracted to me and how betrayed it made me feel to hear that behind my back. But I just started to cry and couldn't really communicate what I wanted to say very well. He was awesome though and just held me. Then after a minute started to speak like he was reading right out of the nicest comments in the original thread. Telling me he was just angry and didn't speak very well. That he really does find me attractive even if the world doesn't and his friends don't. I calmed down pretty quick. I'd basically cried myself out the day before. He took me to his computer and showed me an email he'd sent to all of his friends on Sunday. I wish I could copy paste it now, but he basically called his friends all jerks. Said they'd crossed the line from good-natured trash talk to just being awful, and then continued going far beyond. He said that, for time indefinite, they'd have to find another host, or no longer welcome in my home. He actually said, my name's home. I thought that it would make it sound like I was ordering him around and being awful, but he said he just wanted to emphasize how wrong what they were doing was. Seeing him stand up for me again made me happy, especially seeing me do it without talking bad about me, helping me believe it was really just the heat of the moment bad word choice. He told me to wait in the room and left, coming back with a folder. He said he was going to give me this for Christmas, but that he'd get me something else. I tried to say no, but he insisted. It was plain tickets and brochures. He set up a trip in early January to this spa slash hotel slash resort thing in British Columbia. It was pretty mind-blowing, but I realized that it had to be several thousand dollars he'd spent. We budget pretty thoroughly. He shouldn't have been able to spend that without me noticing. I asked where he got the money and he said he's been planning this for more than a year and saving all the money assigned to his weekly spending money and collecting where I wouldn't notice. Change from groceries, etc. When I say sometimes I'm not sure I deserve him, understand that I'm not having a crisis I need help dealing with. He just really is awesome. He's taking me out for dinner, so I have to go. But I'll be on again tonight. Crisis absolutely averted. I think the end of the story was extremely sweet, and I'm happy to hear that OP's husband is so supportive. It isn't uncommon for people to say things they don't mean when they're upset, and I do think it's a little concerning that he did say that, but at the same time, nobody's perfect, and I think the husband made up for it in a pretty good way. I wish OP nothing but the best, and I hope that her wonderful marriage continues to go on. I'm leaving my boyfriend over a prank. I'm still a bit shaken up, so if this doesn't make sense, I apologize. Trigger warning for unaliving self. I, 18F, have been with my boyfriend, 20M, for almost two years. I moved in with him last August, and things have been pretty rocky. My whole life I've struggled with my mental health, specifically depression, anxiety, and self-harm. I've been clean for a while, though. I also have a history of trauma, but I don't need to get into that. I made sure my boyfriend knew this when we started dating, because I wanted him to be able to nope out of their relationship if it was too much for him to deal with. He assured me it wasn't an issue. He never really seemed to get the whole mental health thing, though. He would make comments saying stuff like depression is just spicy sad and people with trauma should just get over it. He also thinks that only veterans can get PTSD. I've tried explaining things to him, but he just brushes me off, so... I do the best to ignore him. Recently, he started watching couple prank videos on YouTube, and he started pranking me. At first, it was just small things like putting way too much flavor in my water or salt in a bite of my food. I laughed it off. It didn't really bother me. But then he started jumping out and scaring me. That kind of stuff really affects me sometimes because of my PTSD, and I tried to explain that to him. He would apologize but do it again the next day. I was getting annoyed and frustrated. 
but I tried to let it be. Things escalated when last week he put some noisemakers under the toilet seat in the middle of the night. I woke up to go to the bathroom and sat down. Boom. It being late at night, me being half awake, and the loud noise all mixed together, it gave me a full-blown panic attack. I was on the bathroom floor crying and having flashbacks. After I don't know how long, I stopped crying and I was just staring into space. Having flashbacks. He came in because I guess he noticed I was gone for a while. When he saw me sitting on the floor, he remembered this little prank and started laughing. I just glared at him for a second, got up, and called him terrible. I slept in the living room the rest of the night. The next day, I sat him down and I told him he cannot keep scaring me like this. No more jumping out at me, no more loud noises. He pretty much sighed and rolled his eyes, but said he would stop. Everything was fine for a week. I thought the whole prank thing was finally over. Yesterday I got home from being out with a friend, actually feeling better for the first time in a while. When I walked into the house and all the lights were off, I assumed he was still at work, which wasn't abnormal because sometimes he works late. I plug in my phone because it died on my way back home, and when it powered on I got a notification that he sent me a text. It just read, so sorry, I love you. I replied saying, it's okay, I'll see you when you get home, love you and I heard his phone ding in the bathroom. That was weird, I thought. I got up to go get his phone, and when I got to the bathroom, I saw him laying in the bathtub. The bath was full of water. There was an empty bottle of pills in the sink, and he was covered in blood. His wrists were cut, and there was just so much blood. My heart just sank, and I started having a panic attack. I was hyperventilating, crying, and I was just frozen. After a minute, I ran to the living room to get my phone to call 911, and I hear splashing and then laughter. I turned around to see him standing in the hallway, just laughing. He said he got me, and I should have seen the look on my face. I don't even know how to begin to describe the feelings I was experiencing. I was so mad and sad and scared. I didn't even say anything. I just walked out of the house. I just kept walking and eventually I figured out I needed to call my friend to come get me. At first I didn't tell her what happened, I just told her I needed to come get me. It was an emergency. She came and took me back to her house where I'm at now. My boyfriend keeps calling me and he sent me some texts saying he was sorry and it was just a joke. And I'm overreacting and I need to come home. I'm not answering. I don't even know what I would say to him. My friend is going over to his house tomorrow to get my things when he's at work. She said I can stay however long I need. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just feel numb. If you ask me, OP's boyfriend or ex-boyfriend got off way lighter than he should have. The whole point of a prank is to be harmless fun, and I feel like people these days have completely lost that. These days people just kinda use the word prank as if it excuses the horrible things they're doing to each other. Not to mention OP's history with PTSD. And she also asked him to stop as well. All I want to know is how someone this oblivious got a girlfriend in the first place. Update the next day. Thankfully today wasn't as eventful as I was expecting it to be. I ended up sending my now ex boyfriend a text saying that he crossed the line and I don't want to hear from him again. I blocked him on everything after that, and I am planning on changing my number tomorrow. My friend went over to his house around noon today with her boyfriend and was able to retrieve most of my stuff without issue. She got all my personal documents, sentimental items, medication, and clothes. The only things she wasn't able to grab were the TV and Xbox I paid for, because I'm not sure how I can go about getting those back without him accusing me of stealing them. I'm not sure that fight is even worth it right now. Before she left, she put a copy of his house key on the fridge table so he knew I didn't have it. She wanted to unplug his fridge and all of his appliances just to make things harder for him, but I told her not to. I don't really want to add fuel to this fire. His mom reached out and asked me what was going on. Apparently he called her and told her that I had some sort of mental breakdown and ran away, and that he was worried about me. I told her what happened and what he did. She was pissed. She said she thought she raised him better than that and that she was sorry he did what he did. She said that if I need anything, I can let her know and she'll do what she can to help me. I guess his mom told his older sister what happened, and she also reached out to me to apologize for his behavior. I wasn't close to her, but I met her a few times, and she seems like a really nice person. She offered to help with anything I needed, and told me she was going to make sure everyone knows what actually happened. I told her it wasn't necessary, but I appreciate it. But she said she wasn't going to let her brother get away with this. I'm not going to argue, so I thanked her. For the most part, I've just been lying in bed today. I'm so exhausted, physically and emotionally. I wish I had left them sooner. There were red flags that I just ignored. I guess I was afraid of being alone. I don't know. I'm not going to try to blame myself for this whole situation, but I feel like I put myself in this position. This is what I get. I'm not expecting much else to happen. God, I hope nothing else happens. I'll probably give one more update in a few days as long as things have cooled down. If something significant happens, you'll hear from me. Thank you all for your kind words and your advice. It was very much appreciated and definitely needed. I am incredibly happy that OP got out of there. That relationship was not healthy at all. Her ex absolutely did not respect her boundaries, which is a big no-no. And I genuinely feel bad for whoever ends up with that guy next.